this morning I want to speak to you on a topic called a book that reads us. Come on, come on. There's many books that we read and, and the Bible, the Word of God, this light blue Bible, come on, or the phone, whatever you read it through, don't judge. You know, some people like it the old fashioned, they like the they like to read uh through a book. Others, you know, technology is better for them. So whatever it is, as long as you read it, right? You know, it's uh whatever floats your boat better, as long as you don't drown. Um we, we are a church that will be a church of prayer and reading God's word. Because whatever God said in his word, he said that in Matthew. The heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will by no means will pass away. God says, if I speak my word, I make sure that it never comes back void. That means it will bring fruit in your life. So it is worthy of attention it is worthy of your time it is worthy of your day to be able to put your focus onto that i like what this one man of god said he said whatever has your attention will give your direction so if you put your attention on the word of God, it will never mislead you. If you put your attention on social media, on your friends, on rumors, on this or that, it will misguide you. It will give you direction to that. And if people are like, well, my life is miserable. I want to ask you, what has your attention? What do you pay attention to? Because that is the thing that is giving you direction and the, our, our, the, the scripture that we that we will be able to read this morning is Joshua 1 8 it says keep this book the word of God keep this book of law always on your lips somebody say always. always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do somebody say to do everything that is written in it then you will be prosperous and successful prosperous and successful i love the testimony of roger as as he shared this is a proof to show us that the word of god is not just a history book but it is a book that can change your life for the better some things you might not understand i agree with you if you get stuck in the book of leviticus or the numbers however you pronounce it deuteronomy it might get a little dry i understand but the whole book of the Bible, it gives us direction. It purifies our lives. It gives us a lot. <clears throat> it gives us direction. It gives us healing to our body. It gives us encouragement. It gives us peace. It gives us joy that no other book can give us. Amen, church? So it is worthy of my attention. Somebody say, it is worthy of my attention. Come on, somebody. I'm going to need your participation here. So there's a study that it is so awesome. I believe Pastor Lott shared it once and I want to share it again. A study that was done by Center for the Bible Engagement said this. When we read our, the scriptures, where we are in the scriptures at least four times a week. It has to be four times a week. That's when it makes it more of a difference. The feeling lonely drops by 30%. So if somebody comes up to you, man, I feel lonely. Tell them, get in the word, homie. No, I'm serious. I'm, this is straight up. This like they're like, I need advice, and you're like, this is my advice. Get in the book, right? Anger issues drops 32 percent. Wow. Wives to your husbands, just be like, you better get in the word. I'm gonna get the word on you. <laughs> One or the other. Somebody's gonna get in the word. It's either easier the hard way. Bitterness in relationship, in marriage, to your kids, and so on, drops by 40% when we read the Word of God at least four times a week. Alcoholism, alcoholism drops 57%. Feeling spiritually stagnant drops 60%. This is key. I want to highlight this is that I've seen a lot of times where we're, we're spiritually we feel depleted or we feel dry or, or we feel like we're going through a rough season. Get in the Word of God. Begin to memorize it, begin to study it, begin to, begin to meditate on it, begin to quote it to yourself because this will give you fuel for your soul. It will uh, quicken your spiritual life with God. Viewing pornography drops by 61%. On the positive note, sharing your faith jumps 200%. Discipling others jumps 230%. 
So reading the Bible is not just so we can get head knowledge. It actually will, by its very nature, change your life. I want this next year that we are going into. I know there's many other books that we can read that, that you know, self-help books, you know, uh, money management, you know, how to raise your kids, how to get better in, in marriage. Those books are important, but no book can change your life like the Word of God. No book can transform, can bring healing, can bring direction, sense of peace in your life like the Word of God. And we need to give it attention. We need to give it time. We need to give it the most important time out of the day that we can because that book will bring you success and prosperity according to Joshua 1.8. Amen, church? Um, there's why the, book, why the Bible, I just want to read something that's... Um, you might know this or not, why, the, why the, the book of the Bible is so important, why it's so unique. Why the Bible is different from any other book in the world because of its unity. It was written in the span of 1,600 years through 40 different authors, three continents, and three languages, and still managed to have the uniformity throughout its accounts. There are 333 prophecies of Christ mentioned hundreds of years before ever he came to earth. 150 of them occurred in six hours that he hang on the cross. The probability of just eight of 333 coming to pass is equivalent to covering the state of Texas two feet deep in silver dollars and one of which has a special mark on it with only one chance to pick up the right one. So the probability is just insanely, just it's not possible basically. History, science, and geography confirms it. Scientists in the day, in the back of the day, some still believe the earth is flat, but they believe that the earth was flat while the Bible said it was round in Isaiah 40, 22. Noah's ark, the wall of Jericho, and Jesus' tomb were all found. This is to show you the word of God is unique. You, the word of God is still the best-selling book till this day. And you know, you might not carry the Bible with you all the time. Maybe that doesn't fit you. Maybe the color, I don't know what it is. But maybe it is on your phone. But it still deserves your time. We have to understand if, um, if where is that there's a, a, we as humans, we spend about, uh, I believe it was like, 33 hours a week on TV and 14 hours a week on social media, which I think now it's a little different. I think it's like 33 hours on your phone and 14 on your TV. You know, and you are already spending that time into something. It's just right now redirecting your attention and your focus on the Word of God that can give you back energy can give you back love, can give you back peace. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning, they make your coffee wrong. Your day is already ruined. You know how it is. The word of God, sometimes you get on social media and you see somebody got promoted and you lost your job. It already, it, it crushes you, breaks you down. But when you get in the word of God, it gives you strength. It gives you energy. It gives you enduring power to walk with God saying, God, you are on my side. You are faithful. You have never left me. You never forsaken me. You are still by my side. Every promise you said in your word still is true to my life. I know so many times I like, you know, I like to read books and I like to do more of an audio podcast because I drive out, I drive a lot. And for me, that's the best use of time. You know, I'm listening to this one book and it's like hours just wasted and rambling stuff. This thing is like, I'm depressed after listening to that book. You know, I'm not, I'm just serious. And you know, sometimes I pick up a book and I'm reading, I'm like, man, this thing is just, but the word of God, many times you pick it up and you start reading and it begins to read you. It begins to talk to you. It begins to give you hope. Like in the darkest situation, you are able to have peace. And people are like, how do you do it? It's because the Word of God has given me life. The Word of God has given me direction. It's given me hope not to give up on my marriage, not to give up on my kids. Continue to pray, to stand and believe. It, it gives you power that no other book can do. It is worthy of your and my attention whatever has your attention will give you direction for your life and like roger said he said like look i'm, I'm not worthy i don't deserve to have what i have but when he took the word of god and made a 
made it a part of himself made it a part of his life it is by its very nature begin to change his marriage begin to change his business begin to change things around him that he had no control over but the word of God gave power it begins to change things you're like wow I'm different people around you look at you and say you're acting different you talk different why it's because the word of God changes our lives amen church um if you if you want to be taking notes i'm uh, just going to go through a few things and we're also going to go through a few practical things that the word of god that we can make it part of our lives you know this is not just like a i'm going to run to just to do a check mark it, it has to become part of your life just like you know for some of us uh, it's part of our life to drink coffee you know it's like without coffee our life is not complete that's how the word of god has to be that if you don't read the word of god that that day you're different you know with your wife is like you're angry says, I didn't read the word of God you know <laughs> I use that with my wife sometimes it's like get in the word bro so uh we have to be that that if it's not part of your life people see it's different it, it people notice that you know you need to you need to get you need to get yourself in uh in the word of God amen so we have to understand that Jesus Christ and the word they are one the word of God takes the place of unseen Christ when we read the word of God it is Jesus Christ Jesus speaking to us he, Jesus Christ was speaking through us and to us amen church so the first point is whatever dominates your mind will dominate your life whatever dominates your mind will begin to dominate your life will give you direction will make you talk in a certain way will make you walk in a certain way it makes you do certain things in your life so we have to understand if we fill our mind with the word of God it will like it says in Joshua give you success and prosperity it is simply what you you filled your mind with it. sooner or later it will begin to come out out of your mouth it will begin to dominate your thoughts whenever a failure will come you're in your mind you right away say whatever my hand touches will be blessed I'll walk in I'll be blessed and I will walk out I will be blessed my business will be blessed my family will be blessed my marriage will be blessed so there is no room in your mind for failure why because the word of God is dominating your mind but if failure is dominating your mind failure already gave you direction some people are like well we what, what we think that's what we're going to do so if failure you know you got a flat tire then you got a speeding ticket maybe your tabs are expired you got a ticket for that you know you went to your job and, and you're late and boss gave you you know said one more time happens you're fired all these things are piling up and your mind is already filled with failure guess what failure will follow you know it's just that, that, that's how it happens but if you know if the word of God is dominating your mind sooner or later the success and prosperity will begin to flow with you and anything that you touch will begin to prosper and people will see you like they saw Joseph and said that God is with him yes he was a slave yes he was betrayed yes this this happened to him but I don't know what happened but he's successful why because God is with him Jesus and the word are one and if the word is in you Christ is in you amen church so I challenge you I challenge you let the word of God begin to dominate your mind the, it's it's not that you you have to be like oh the scripture is here no is you take one how I do it pra practically for myself as I take one scripture a day and I try to quote it to myself sometimes up to a hundred times I remember one time that um, I came to morning prayer just a lot of things were not adding up you know failure here failure there and I took the scripture that whatever your hand touches will be blessed and I was walking for like an hour and I was saying it to myself so much until everything that afterwards came into me right away I said it's gonna be blessed it's gonna be blessed it's gonna be blessed it's gonna, like you couldn't tell me it's gonna fail why because it, logically I'm like it's gonna work why because God said that whatever my hand touches will be blessed and you know I'm not the smartest cook in the jar you know all these things barely did this this graduated there you know whatever struggles real you know what I'm saying but certain things begin to follow me that I look back and some people are like oh you guys accomplished these things that people take four years to do you guys just did it in three months how come well I don't know maybe whatever your hand touches will be blessed could that be a reason why 
could that be a reason why my family is strong today because you know you took the scripture that me and my house will serve the Lord could that be a reason could that be a reason why you have health in your body by his stripes you are healed doctor said you were supposed to die but you're still living could that be a reason why because God's word gives us power to do what we were called to do amen church Jesus at the weakest point of his life referred back to scripture not to logic when he was when he was at the weakest point you know being tempted in the wilderness he always said it was written it was written many times when our failures happen we go to logic we go to reasoning we go to statistics we go to oh I deserve it why because I messed up there oh you know because of my family this is why we don't we, we we try to reason for God we start to say God is doing it because of this no God wants you to go back to scripture at your weakest point of your life why because that scripture will give you power at your weakest point of your life when we make God's word the standard for your life, you'll be able to see a life that is successful. Certain things might not seem a success, but like I said, with God, certain times he takes you a step back so he can take you 10 steps forward. He prepares us for the destiny that we have ahead of our lives. Now, even yesterday I was walking around, this quote came to me is that, you know, only a fool compares his or somebody else's failure or success because he fails to understand the destiny that lies behind those failures or mistakes. You know, it would be very fool to con compare your life to Joseph when he was in the dry pit. It would be very foolish of you to be like, oh, my life is good. At least it's not like Joseph. He's in dry pit. He just got betrayed. But then Joseph got to the throne. And you're still your normal you. You know? God many times take you through a place where it feels like he has left you. But God's like... The destiny that lies ahead of you, you do not even imagine. The, the Jeremiah 29, 11, the thoughts I have towards you is, is thoughts of good and not of evil. This, this dark season might seem evil, but the plans I have for you is to prosper you, to give you hope, and to give you a future. Come on, somebody. To the extent to which we think the thoughts of God, the Word of God, is to the same extent we will have the power of God in your life it's the extent you know, some people choose to dominate their mind with self thoughts you know oh just do better be better go into the Word of God you're still using the same amount of energy on, the, on those other you know you begin to dominate your mind with the Word of God and God says oh this guy is talking my words and and I said it that my word cannot come back void I got to make sure this boy is taken care of I got to make sure this marriage is taken care of I got to make sure this business is taken care of why because they're speaking my words you know and, and, and that's how it is and when, when God begins to see that you're saying the same thing that he said he you catch his attention you don't sit there and say God I deserve it you got to give it to me no you said God you said it God says okay you got my attention it's not like oh God you need to heal me because you know I've been going through so much no it says God by your stripes I am healed and God says I like that now now this is what I'm saying this is what I'm thinking now I gotta go into his life it might not be the time that you wanted but God's word will never come back void in your life time and season will differ for each and and every one of us what might take you a year might take me five years I don't know your destiny but I know one thing is God said that I'm faithful I was faith I was faithful to Isaac I was faithful to Jacob I was faithful to Abraham I was faithful to so many things my name is faithful I know that if I said something in your word it will come to pass amen church second point is that is to know God is to know his word because God does nothing without his word if God is to do something in your life, he will do it through his word in your life. When God created the world, he spoke it into existence. It was his word that made it come to pass. I want to, this morning, I want to strike a hunger for you for God's word. I'm not saying that you have to, you know, have the word of God in front of your face the whole time and walk around. No, I'm taking is, is you take practically a scripture too and you begin to make it a part of your life. 
You begin to quote it for yourself. You begin to memorize it. You know, for me, like when I come to prayer, I just concentrate on, on that one. You know, it's not for me like, oh, read 10 chapters and, that, and that's it. For me, is I read until something speaks out to me and then I stop. And I say, God, help this scripture read me. And then I quote that scripture. I, read, I, I, I say it more and more and more. And then it begins to talk to me throughout my day. It begins, God begins to reveal himself through his word. God will speak and do things in your life through his word. Amen, church? And the last point is the word of God will change your life by its very nature. And Joshua 1.8, it says, do according to to what is written in it and then you shall have prosperity and success in your life many times we we think about the word of God but the doing is like the final part the final part of it it is it's kind of like the hardest part but without it it will have no meaning it will just become another history book to you the word of God has to come to a place where where doing according to it you know living a holy life living a righteous life and to me what is doing according to the word of God is when when it talks about to love your neighbor even though those who curse you is actually loving them it's sometimes hard when there's the best people that are around you that hurt you but it's it's doing those things and it's and it's not that that God knows that it's hard and he wants to punish it God just wants you to be prosper to have prosperity and to have success in that area in the area of forgiveness and the area of health it's when we do God's word it's not that God wants to punish us because we have no other thing as like oh I don't want you in social media I want you to be in my word so you can have a boring life no it's not God says I want you to succeed in everything that you do and and and, and you know these other things will not bring you success as my word will bring success doing the word of God is what brings the changes in our life it is actually you know when you are encountering certain difficulties in your life doing the word of God is actually standing on his promise and says God you set me in my house will serve the Lord I know I'm losing my child to drugs you know it, they're, they're, it looks like it's been years but doing the word of God is standing upon the word of God and not letting any other thought say my child will die out of drugs Doing the word of God is fighting for your marriage and believing that God is the, is the love and, and bring unity, bring chemistry in that marriage. That is doing the word of God, is loving them and not expecting nothing back. Like the scripture says, we love their wife, their spouse as Christ loved the church. It, that is, that is the, the final and the hardest part about it, but that is what makes everything complete with God. In this year, um, in this year that's coming up, I want us to to start off as for some of us that are already reading and you see maybe you're stagnant and you're reading the word of God try to switch certain things up maybe start that you're only reading begin to read and memorize for some of us that are not reading at all I challenge you to maybe find one scripture don't, don't do a chapter find one scripture a day and memorize it just take those small steps because I remember sometimes I'm like I'm gonna read five chapters a day I'm gonna finish the book in 72 hours <laughs> you know like if you read the whole 72 hours you can actually read the whole bible and it's it's not you can't really repeat it for the the word of god to be affecting your life it has to be systematic and it has to be continual and it has to be kind of like an everyday thing you have to make have to make a decision for it to become part of your life just like brushing your teeth taking a shower that's it's it's you it's not like oh i didn't have time to shower today you stink you know you have to make time for it it's, without it you have to just put it in your schedule say you know I wake up five minutes I'm gonna dedicate it just for reading the Word of God maybe for some of you read for an hour stretch it to an hour to 15 minutes whatever it is I want to give you certain tips on, on something that helped me out six ways that we can make God's Word into our life number one is actually reading it I would challenge if you're reading by yourself to, to read in the group like many of us we have life groups uh that, that somebody can check up on you hey how are you doing with your reading plan maybe once a week 
maybe once in every couple of days that you read it that you begin to to see and give it your best time don't give the word of God the time that nobody else needs like oh um well, I have five minutes to spare let me just just squeeze in the scripture no when you wake up when your mind is fresh give that five minutes ten minutes thirty minutes an hour give it to the word of God let it let it read you as you read it let it read you in the back of every every person's pew there we put in a year yearly bible plan where you can read um can you wave it and wave your hands so in the back of your pew you should have one it's just an example you don't have to use that one many bible apps have its own plans this is just an example that that this coming year as we're going to dedicate time to prayer and reading the word of god let it be at least a one verse let it be that maybe that the few phrases from the word of God that can challenge you to become better than yourself. Holy Spirit will empower you to do better than you ever, ever done before. Second one, as I encourage you to listen to it. We spend a lot of times driving. How many of you guys at least drive five minutes a day? At least five minutes. One chapter is about three minutes to listen to. One chapter is three minutes. So what I do many times when I drive from from my house to workplace, about fifteen minute drive, I listen to one chapter around five times. So with the more you listen to it, the more it begins to reveal itself. You know how many times you heard a certain phrase so many times, and then one time somebody said it, you're like, "What? Now I understand." You know what I'm saying? That's how that is with the Word of God. When you listen to it so many times, it will come to a place where that same verse will mean a whole different book to you like i'm saying many times i'm like reading the certain things i'm like Shh. until somebody says it again i'm like now i understand what the word of god says so first one is what read it second of it is listen to it so if you say well i don't have a way to listen on our if you download our hungry gen uh app it's called the hungry gen app i don't know if we have it um you can actually Play the chapter that you're reading. It will actually read it to you on the lazy side. <laughs> but it actually can read it to you. You can read it and it can actually read it to you. So I challenge you. The first one is actually reading it yourself. Second of all is try, re uh, try listening to it. Let, it. let it read you. Third one is memorize it. Memorize it. Oh man, we know lyrics from, from songs that nobody needs to hear, right? Sometimes an accident during prayer comes out, right? <laughs> so what I do many times when I, when I read, uh, when I read during, that day, during the morning and uh, one chapter, I see a scripture. Or maybe I don't find a, so I, maybe I don't have any scripture from that. I try to find a scripture that I can memorize. It helps you to replace that fear, that junk, that, that worry, that anxiety out of your life. Sometimes people come in and say, oh, I have so much worry in my mind. Replace it. You can, remember, you can never delete something. You can only replace in your mind. You can only replace it. And sometimes you're, you're worried about certain things and so much in your mind. Begin to shove that scripture in there until that worry leaves. That's how it was for me. That one time, I literally spent one hour walking back and forth saying the same thing. Everything my hand touches will be blessed. I was walking back and forth and said, God, make it, make it a part of me because right now what's part of me is failure. And literally took an hour to get it out of my mind. But now if you ask me, some people are like, why are you so positive? Well, I don't know. God's word is it's, it's stuck in there really well. So it's because, because you made it so much part of you that you're not allowing failure to have part in your mind. The more it sits in your mind, the more power it has over your life. So the, you, the more you let the Word of God sit in your mind, the more it will give you power over the same situation that crushed somebody. For you, it just excelled you to go faster. So begin to memorize it. A fourth one is meditate on it. As you're going to need to mem as you're going to memorize it, it will, it will be replaying in your mind. It will begin to replay in your mind. It will begin to be like that. And then, and then you'll see that the more you think about it, the more it becomes part of you, the more it becomes part of your habits, then it gets into your actions. And sooner or later, you begin to act like a righteous man. 
It's like, I don't know how this happened. Why? Because it's part of your meditation. I, I love what T.B. Joshua said is meditation in the word of God is a visit to him. The word becomes a part of us by meditation. The word of God becomes part of you when you begin to med meditate on it. Fifth one is speak the word. Speak in that situation. When the moment somebody tells you certain things or the moment you do something and then it didn't work or, or it failed or this, and those thoughts right away come into your mind. That's the time what you memorized, that's the time to speak it. And that's the hardest time to do it. When you have that, I have a chase app and there's this one red button that appears in the chase app. I'm like, devil, you're a liar. <laughs> Nothing has bounced today. <laughs> you know, whenever you see your bank account and it's negative, begin to speak, speak the word of God. The moment your child begins to be sick, begin to speak the word of God. The moment you, you have, a, you know, tension in your marriage, this is where you speak the word of God. The moment somebody hurts you, that's where you speak the word of God. You don't speak the word of the situation. You don't speak the word that's, you know, a failure, all these things. This is the time to speak the word of God. It says the word of God that, that our, li our tongue has, has power of life and death. The word of God is power. The word of God is life in itself. So when you begin to speak, you begin to reverse the situation the devil has created. And some people are like, well, I spoke it, you know, for a day. It didn't go away. Some of us have been speaking it for five years. We're still waiting. And what you have today in this church, as this church right now, the hungry gen, thousands, local members globally, you know, all these things that God has done. We've been speaking it so many times. I mean, even when we had one pew, just, just one pew full of people. We were saying we're going to have thousands locally. We're going to have people that are going to be saved every service. And it was creating life. It was creating life. It was creating life. It was speaking the dry bones. And sooner or later, those bones came to life. And God was faithful for his promises. Amen, church? And the last but not least is obey it. Obey it. Somebody say obey it. I want you to, when you read the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit to make the scriptures real, real to you. For me, before, actually before I read the Bible, I actually pray and I ask God, help me to understand what I'm reading. Help me to apply it in my life. Because for me, it, it, I'm telling you, it's not easy. Sometimes you're like, man, I read the scripture so many times, it's just, it's boring. But if you ask Holy Spirit, give me a fresh love for the Word of God, God will begin to quicken that fresh love. God will give, give you that desire to wake up in the morning and to spend time with Him. God will give because it will, it will by its very nature change your life. Because we as human beings, we, we begin, we repeat the things that bring us reward, right? The things that give us success, we continue to do. So begin to ask God, God, you know, it's, it's not, with the word of God, it's not like a one-time thing. Oh, I'm going to come today to church and everything should be great. No, you have to, it takes time. It's like a seed when you put it in the ground. It takes time. You don't, you don't sow it today and then tomorrow you're like, you better, you better bring me fruit or I'm going to dig you up type of thing. It's, it's like you, you lay the seed and you begin to pray it. You begin to say it in your, in your family. You begin to say it to your kids. You begin to say it to your finances. You begin to say it to your health. And sooner or later, you begin to reap the reward of God's word in your life. Amen, church? Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Charles Spurgeon said this, Visit many books, but live in the Bible visit many books it's so right to read other books but live in the bible yeah i'm telling you for me for my life the word of god has has been is the been the biggest let's support the biggest push through when, they, when things seemed impossible and the back of mind all the scripture was ringing you'll be blessed as you walk in you'll be blessed as you walk out you'll be blessed in the fields you'll be blessed in your house You'll be blessed. Uh, it just everything that you do will be blessed because God, God's like, you think your thoughts towards you are good? He said, my thoughts for you are like sin. You can't even count the thoughts I have towards you. It's, it's not, it doesn't compare to any self, self book, any this or that book, which they are important. They do help us. But the word of God gives you power. It gives you life. And with the reward of that, it gives you success and it gives you prosperity. I want us to rise up on our feet 
and right now we're going to spend just a little bit of time in worshiping God and also we're going to pray that God's going to give us grace to make the word of God a standard for life amen church I want you to raise your hand I want you to begin to say father I thank you for the word of God father I thank you that you sent your word and every promise that you spoke into my life is for me it's every word father that is written was paid through the blood of Jesus Christ is for my life for me to have a good life to me to have a prosperous life for me to have a healthy life for me to have a good marriage for me to have a good ministry that I'll be used by you father we thank you and we give you grace hey this is pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our hungry generation YouTube community and click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon thank you for watching and God bless you